Hello and welcome to the Division 2 podcast, uh, which is uh, filmed very much just after and very much last minute, again, with my uh, colleague, Ivor Brin Mike. How are you doing? I'm alright, I am. So this will have to be a bit rapid fire, not too rapid fire, but there was only 14 of you that blooming even started, so there's not tons to talk about. Thanks to me being on holiday and a few other dodgy connections and all sorts. Um, yeah, and it was, a it was big one for the championship as well because Raycon was in there. It was a great chance for some people to close that gap in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like Campbell um, and RJ in particular and Caesar and probably J. Cole as well would have been. And also someone also that kind of brought themselves into the mix a little bit. Um, was the man Morgan who qualified on pole by a nice, comfortable quarter of a second, which was nice yeah. to nice to see. I mean, the past two races he's really stepped it up. I think uh, mm. B Morgan he was showing the uh, the pace that he had in pre-season as well because he looked rapid in pre-season, but. Kind of wasn't there in the first couple of races. No, no. Um, and then we had obviously Campbell in the second, and and Caesar then, and Jaco, which we would expect those guys to be up there, um, with the exception of RJ, who didn't set a time. Uh, did RJ? Did RJ he have a out, shunt? He went out a few times, and I just never put a lap together. Hmm. So that was a little bit un unusual, um, but it was very much in the top ten were all on the mediums, and then it was followed by Ben, a toxic here who's showing his pace again. Bree, Agony, Tigaby, and Cloudy, all on the soft, uh, sorry, medium compound. So um, almost to form, really, I think. Other than Morgan, even though he did win the previous race, I don't think people would have anticipated him beating Campbell and Caesar. Maybe they will yeah. now. Um, I mean, he's really trying to prop up those uh, Red Bull stats across the uh, all three divisions, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. he's, he's doing a good job. He's, uh, he's more illustrious teammate from last season. Bear in mind that Dan obviously beat him to the D3 title. Um, starting in 11, albeit on the hards. Um, with Mackin, um, who is a very quick guy. Shocked to see him so far down. He obviously had an invalidation at some point uh, on the mediums, I dare say. Um, with Starger and RJ um, at the rear. So. Bit of both, really. Bit of what you would expect, bit of what you wouldn't expect in quality. Yeah. And moving on to something that I didn't expect, I did not expect the conditions to be the way they were in the race. I cannot tell you, you did say to me beforehand as well, I cannot tell you how happy I was that I didn't have to put up with that. What an unbelievable... I've seen it happen for like 10 laps before in back in 2017 where it never got truly inters. I've never, never seen it for a whole race do that. Know, that was, was absolutely crazy. It was unbelievable because I was like, okay, right, yep. So uh, mediums and I, right, they're going to go to the rain. I right, mm. chucking on hards. Um, okay, right, Dan's in perfect position now. Dan's in perfect position and oh, Dan's gone to the mediums. Huh? <laughs> I, I just, I just couldn't fathom it. It was just so, so unusual, and it created. Did anyone pit for inters and, and pay for it? Um, I don't think so. Wow. I mean, it seems like. Well, fair play for everyone holding their nerve, because it wouldn't surprise me if someone would have taken a gamble on it. They thought it, you know, especially after about six or seven laps when you think it is going to get worse. But well, that was the thing. I mean, just watching that, I was, I was thinking that it was going to get to that point. Uh, but mm. 
but it just never happened. It was like the rain just got heavier and then went later, then heavier, then went later. And it was just like, mm. I, don't, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. It didn't stop Morgan from getting a cracking win against Caesar and Campbell, who were within a second, well, just over a second, Campbell was, um, of Morgan. So that's a strong podium. It's a podium that I suspect we might see one or two more times this season as well. Yeah, the interesting thing was as well is that they made contact, I think, in a turn, turn two, which really brought Campbell into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was quite unfortunate, that. People are... I know it's... I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I, I think nothing will happen with... Well, I, I, I do know nothing's going to happen with the standings. Um, mm. As in, like, the, the race standings of it, so... But... It's a tough one. I do... I get why season might have been not the happiest. Um, but... It was a fairly minor knock. It's very hard there. It, there was quite a few incidences according to the stewards of uh, through turn two. Because the problem is, is the it's it's just understeer city. Yeah, it's and so you're hard always uh, you're always pushing towards that apex no matter what line you take in uh, turn one. You're always pushing towards the apex or turn two, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So. I think just a bit unfortunate, um, but nice to see they still managed to come top two. I think that it would have been a bit worse if let's say sees a span and then he would have got taken by Campbell. But I think, yeah, I, I think that's probably the the right thing that they didn't lose any positions. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, one person we got to give a bit of a shout out because it was unfortunate what happened to him. Toxic, you know, he was having a great race and uh, chilling in fourth, yeah, loving life, and then just he, he, he's, he's gonna be very dangerous, I think, um, this season. Um, and he was running really well, but then obviously, Dan, Dan, Jayco, and Ben, um, otherwise known as Tin Can, and RJ. All kind of benefited from that. Uh, Toxic had a three second pen, which he meant he got jumped by RJ. Um, but yeah, it was a. It wasn't the most lively of races, was it? From what I've seen. It was a little bit. Yeah. It can't have been the funnest one you've ever commentated on. Uh, I mean, it, it only started to heat up really towards the last kind of 10 laps. So that's when you had Caesar closing in on B Morgan. Uh, that's when you had Dan who made his pit stop and now coming back onto the mediums and would have to fight his way through the field again. And mm. obviously then uh, you had uh, Campbell being thrown into the mix and in the top uh, the top fight, Toxic going for the spin. RJW mm. trying to get past Tigger B in the latter stages of the race for what was eighth place at the time yeah yeah and um obviously we had mapping come ninth but he got a, a a place pen for his incident with starger um mm. which um knocked him down and i knocked tiggerby up um and then brie and starger rounding it off but I, I think the point is um that it's a bit lost sometimes in certain particularly in formula one league racing I see it a lot in other league, like other races. If if you do spin someone, you should wait for them. Um, it, it's difficult in the cold light of day because sometimes you might not think it's your fault, um, and you think maybe that like if someone dive bombs you and they spin and then don't wait for them. But it's it's within the rules of of actually most leagues that you do that including ours mm. so i think that's the why the penalty place was probably well, applied i think uh with something like that you've got to at least show intent that you were willing to slow down the line back through yeah 
Yeah. So there are some. Don't get me wrong. There are some situations where, I mean, this happened to me in a different, uh, different league where I've made the slightest contact with someone's uh, back end at Baku in mm. turn four, and this was on the entry into the corner. They've lost the back end then on the exit. I've slowed down, but he's literally just done a complete spin into the wall. Yeah, and I, uh, there are circumstances. Obviously, if say. A, a good example will be Monza turn two. If you have a contact there, someone does a half spin, and then someone comes in behind and collects them. Well, mm. what can you do? So ah, I do sympathise why people don't sometimes do it. Um, and in in some ways, if you're willing to let the stewards decide, then that's fair enough. Um, so yeah, nothing nothing on Mackin really. A fairly innocuous incident in some senses, but. Um, such difficult conditions as well. Really, really tough. And again, I just, I'm so glad I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I think uh, Raikon would have been watching that race and would have had a smile on his face as well. Yeah, I think so. Because RJ, I mean, all it's done is create a, well, there's five points between second to sixth. Not to mention me in seventh, who's only five points back from that. So, yeah, I mean, he's loving very life. Close. Very close in the championship with you lot. And then you've even got J. Cole, who just seems to be... I mean, his record's stunning. Fifth, didn't start. Thirteenth, fifth, fifth, fifth. I think now J. Cole's starting to find that that form from uh, last season now. Yeah. I agree. And I think he, he'll push on. Um, perhaps me and Dan might take a bit of a more of a back seat. Not completely. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if um, right on RJ Caesar. Campbell and Jake will go on to push for the title and then me and Dan are in the mix but never never there so to mm. speak well I think there's going to be a few races where you, Dan J. Cole and I will be able to take some very good points that will put you back in that championship fight yeah, true. And then you, there's other guys. I mean, Tigaby, Tigaby and Tom are quick. Bones is quick. Cloudy, Starger. Um, yeah, to be honest, with Bones, TK. I've been surprised at him. Because since the uh, podium on, at Australia, hmm. hasn't really shown any, uh, any of that pace that we kind of thought after Australia that he would have had moving forward. Which is no, a bit unfortunate. Absolutely. And Toxic's joined along with two other uh, recommendations of his. And Toxic's quick. And if I'm, if these guys are anything like him, it just makes makes an insanely quick top ten. Really, I would say. I mean, um, well, we've been we've been talking about how close D three is for that top ten. Hmm. I think D two is even closer. I think it's closer from 1st through to like 15th, definitely, um, definitely, definitely, I think um, perhaps there's a top 2 or 3 in, and then Rikon, you know, Rikon, we, uh, Rikon and Campbell also are quite quick as well, so, but yeah, I think both leagues, they're really well balanced, really well balanced, um, it's going to be tough if we do move to 4 divisions. <laughs> to split, where where do we put the line? You know, <laughs> like that's not going to be fun to do. Um, I mean, Oscar, I think you got to maintain your position as the best uh, D three lad in D two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's well, Morgan. I mean, me, Morgan and Dan are not far away at all. So, and Tom isn't Tom isn't miles behind. He's he's got his quick races coming up at some point. So. Just don't know, but 
Monza will be. I'll tell you now, Rykon's incredibly quick at Monza. He he, he should win. Hmm. Um, Are you going to four twenty six points from? Um, no, 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 no. I think someone will nick the point off him. Uh, perhaps like tenth or something, but I think he will comfortably win um, with Caesar and Campbell and J Cole and RJ not far behind. Potentially Dan. I'm like you. I'm quite quick on TT, um, but I can't keep it consistent. One lap, if I can put the lap together. I can be, I'm quicker than Rykon, but I can't, I can't just keep it up. It's just it's an annoying been, track. It's going to be controversy in there. Mark said he's quicker than Rykon. <laughs> On TT, <laughs> unless he's beat me. Uh, but, I, and I'm not just saying it. It's, <laughs> it's just not, not, not my, uh, not my forte, this consistency around here. So, but we'll see. Have you got any predictions? Right, well, I think uh, Raycon's going to come back and win this one. I do think that mm. is going to happen. Just because he's missed last race and uh, it's time for him to come back now and really stamp stamp his foot back on the championship now that they've had their chance to close up a bit. Now it's time for Raycon to put the pressure on him. So I think uh, Raycon will come back and get the win. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Caesar second. I'm going to say J. Cole third. Mm. And um, I don't think we're discounting Toxic. I just don't think we've seen we've only seen one race from him. But it wouldn't surprise me if he was up there too. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's tough to mm. include someone in the uh, top three when you've only seen one race. But... That'll be intriguing. It'll be, it'll be, this will be more fun to commentate, if only because I'm back. Uh, do you expect any safety cars? <sighs> Depends on the game. There'll be an incident that requires a safety car, whether it comes out or not. I tell you one thing, for all leagues, someone will go into the back of someone who loses it at Ascari. Oh, to be That's honest, I think prediction. someone's going to be going at the back of someone at the turn one on lap one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It, I think every division might have an early casualty. Um, it's LOE tradition slash PRL tradition. For some reason, every race day in Monza, someone mm. crashes before turn one. Well, that's going to be a big rip for me in D3. <laughs> Someone, <laughs> someone tries to go right, or gets pushed. It, or you could argue this, the person on the left tries to push right off the start, and someone nabs someone's back right, and they go flying into the left-hand wall before turn one. It happens every time. I don't know why, but I don't know about you, but if I, by some, if by some miracle, anywhere near the front row, I'm cutting that first chicane. God, no. I'm building up the lead. Then. That's right, I'll gain about 10 seconds, seconds on that. <laughs> Break slipstream. It's not the worst idea. I mean, whether the steward uh, takes takes uh, umbrage to it is another question, but it's, it's probably not the worst. My brakes don't work. My brakes don't work. <laughs> you break the slipstream, you guarantee yourself a front wing. The worst strategies, you, you get top three, even the 10 seconds. No. Uh, uh, we'll uh, do that. It'll be interesting. Right, well, uh, I will have to head. We haven't got long now until your race. Circa uh, about so, an hour. So. Unfortunately, guys, we had to keep this one pretty short because of yes. how, how quickly uh, we had to just get both D3 and D2 together pretty quick. So. Apologies to anyone that uh, thinks that we're selling D2 a bit short than that by only having 15 minutes or so. But really, it just wasn't a huge amount that happened in D2. No, no, no. Well, it would definitely be a long. I suspect it will be a longer one next week. Yeah, so and until then, uh, guys, uh, make sure you 
like and subscribe to Liga Europe uh, channel and make sure you tune in for all the races tonight. Uh, D3 at 20 past 6 and D1 at 22.7 and then this race D2 at Quarter to 745. Yeah, quarter to <laughs> I was thinking, is no. it 22 or quarter to two? <laughs> <laughs> that'd, uh, that'd be good ones tonight. If only for the slight chaos. I just don't wish it on anyone personally. Just, uh, But there is always going to be chaos here. So. Yep, so hope you guys enjoy and we'll catch you later tonight. Cheers, guys.